Hey everyone and welcome to the fifth Unity tutorial. Right, to start this one off we're actually going to look at uh, what we call standard assets and terrains, finally. Okay, and after this we're going to start getting into the good stuff such as gameplay and scripts and things like that. So it's actually going to become a game and we're going to start making our pinball. But for the moment, we'll go through this, we'll get this out of the way and just hopefully you enjoy the terrain bit because it's good fun. Now, with assets... The reason you start a project with nothing is because Unity is bare bones. Okay, it lets you do whatever you want and it starts you with nothing and you have to build it up. Okay, and saying that, there's heaps of different places where you can get your assets from. I mean, obviously you can make your own in 3D editors, in sound editors, in Photoshop and things like that and then bring them in to Unity. Or, you know, copyrights considered you can utilize resources from other projects or from the web okay quite easily so just as an example for you okay let's say in angry bots you love the look of I don't know let's have a look at environment the doors let's say you absolutely love the doors okay what we can do is we can actually copy that folder and then put that into our project folder into its assets make sure it goes in there Okay, I might even make an objects folder for it, just because it'd be nice and neat. Paste it. Let Windows copy over all the stuff. I think it's done. If you come back into it, like we always have, you've got all the doors there. I mean, they're untextured because I forgot to import the textures. But there's the doors. Okay, you can utilize them throughout your project as much as you want. I mean, do consider copyright as an issue. Okay, people make these things, so they will have a copyright on them but for the moment that's how you bring in assets or you know models or textures from another program or another source for that matter the next place that you can get it from is called the standard assets okay when you install unity it comes with a whole set of assets okay unfortunately it doesn't come with any 3d models besides what's in angry bots but there's different things and one of them we're going to use today so to, ins and to insert standard assets into your project is quite easy okay just right click anywhere in the assets pane go to import package and you get all these standard assets okay you can choose whatever you want and have a play around with them as I said some of them are pro only so you're gonna have to really keep an eye on that but for the moment let's have a look at terrain assets because we're actually going to use these for our terrain tutorial okay when you go to import something you will always get this import dialogue so these are all assets that have been made that you can utilize for the terrain okay we've got grass we've got textures we've got trees and things like that so what we're going to do is i'm just going to leave them all ticked okay click the import button let it insert and there's my standard assets so if i expand terrain i've got grass textures and a tree which you can have a look at down here yeah, anyway, so what we're going to do now is let's have a look at a terrain. Alright, so terrain is always created up here in the terrain menu. It's quite easy. You go terrain, create. There's my terrain. You can see it's up here in the hierarchy, but another thing I'd like to add is right there. When you create a terrain, this gets shoved down here, and I'll explain why in a bit. So with our terrain, it's massive. That is absolutely huge okay and it would take me hours and hours and hours just to fiddle around with that a player would probably be about that size there and it would take him about half an hour to walk to the other side of that so what we're going to do is we're going to resize this to start with and then we're going to start playing around with it we're actually going to make a terrain an outdoors terrain so firstly to resize a terrain you go up to the menu go to set resolution Okay, and the width and the length are what specify how big this square is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 500 and 500 and then set resolution. There you go. It's a fourth of what we had before and it's still massive. Okay. You can't really get a scale of it. Let's shove a cube on it. It is absolutely enormous, even at 500 by 500. This is good for a nice little outdoor scene. So let's delete Mr. Cube. 
And the first thing I need to explain about terrain is it's what you call a height map. Okay, a height map basically is a black and white picture, and the dark spots of the picture go high, and the light spots of the picture go low. Okay, and that way we can actually make rolling hills, we can make little crevices and things like that. I have to add though, we cannot do caves. You can't do interiors and things like that. Okay, I'll go through that detail in a moment, but let's have a look at this first of all. This is your terrain component over here, okay, which allows us all these different controls okay, to do heaps of different things, but we're going to start with this over here, raise and lower terrain. Really easy to start with. We'll select, you can select different pictures if you want, but I'm going to stick with this first one. Up the brush size, up the opacity, and I'm just going to draw. Just left click. Okay, you can even up, lower the opacity so it won't have much of an effect. Lower the brush size to get a bit more detail in there. Okay, it's up to you, or I can change the brush entirely. But yeah, so that is the introduction to raising and lowering, lowering the height map of the terrain. So it looks pretty dodgy at the moment. First of all, I've got these big spikes over here, and I don't like how high this is compared to the flat bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the terrain a little bit. Okay, it's pretty easy. If you hold shift and then click, it starts lowering. So that looks cool. That looks like a little water hole. Yeah. And I think the biggest problem when you're first creating a terrain is it looks too smooth. It looks too nice to be, you know, a proper hillside or something like that. Okay, it'd never be that nice unless it rains 24-7. But what we can do is we can grab one of these textured razors. I'm going to lower the opacity a bit. And I'm just going to draw over the top of my mountains. It's going to look terrible at the moment. Just bear with me. Okay. And what that's done, that's added a whole lot of detail in there. That looks pretty dodgy. But I'm going to show you the next tool that's going to fix this up. Okay. We can grab this second tool. Or well, third tool, I should say. Which is smooth height. Okay. And what that's going to do is that's going to smooth out all of this over the top and it's going to make it look a bit more natural so let's grab this brush now you don't want to smooth out all of the bumpiness but heck who knows you might actually want to keep something bumpy and reduce it all but it's up to you so there you go that might not look like it made much difference but a bit bumpier, it looks a bit rougher down the edges. It looks a bit more natural. But anyhow, those, those are the first two tools. You've got your raise and lower, and you've got your smooth. This next one is the paint height. Now, let's say I wanted to flatten all this out again, okay? I'm not going to do all of it. I'll flatten a section out over here. Okay? And what you need to do is you need to pick which height you want to start painting at. So you hold shift and you click first. Okay, once you've done that, Start painting. Okay, and you can do like an artificial carving into the mountainside. Okay, and that looks pretty meh. So I'll grab my smooth tool, smooth it all out. Who knows, this might be a water basin or something like that. Okay, so that there is pretty much how these are the three tools that you use to affect the mountainsides and the landscape of what you've got. Okay. But let's, black and white's a bit boring. So let's add a little bit of detail to this. Let's add some textures, okay? Up here on the terrain component again, we go to the paintbrush. Uh, from there, there are no terrain textures currently defined. So what we need to do is add some in there. So start, we go edit, then add texture. All right, and the only thing we need to worry about is the texture pocket. So click select and find the one you want to use. Okay, I'm going to start with grass. Grass hill. Don't select this one. We're going to use that in a bit later. Select this grass one here. So double click and add. Now, because we didn't have a texture, it's filled in the landscape with a texture for us. All right. Now, I don't want all of this green. Some of this is going to be brown. Some of it's going to be rocky. This is going to be water. So I need to put sand underneath it. 
Alright, so we can do a couple of things for that. We can go to add texture again. And then we select the next one. Let's go dirt. And add. Alright, so we've got the two textures now. And what we can do is you select the texture you want and you just start painting. Just like that. Yeah, that might look way too sharp. It might look like a dodgy bit of painting at the current moment. But what we're going to do, we're going to start blending these textures together. Okay, that looks terrible. That's fine by me. Okay, I'm going to paint this little bit in here. Yeah, good enough. Alright. So what we can do now if we can start blending these textures together. I'm going to fix up a few of these edges because I had a massive brush. Okay, I'm going to fix this one up here. Yeah, don't be too neat with it. Otherwise you lose some of your... detail. Alright. What we can do now is we can start blending these textures together. So... What I mean by that is we're going to actually have a little bit of the dirt and we're going to have a little bit of the grass, okay? And they're going to blend over together so it's sort of like a transition effect, okay? So for that, I'm going to select this hazy one. I'm going to turn down the target strength and the opacity of the brush. The size is pretty good, so I'm going to leave that as is. And I'm going to paint, remember I've got the grass selected, I'm going to paint it over the sand. You sort of do get a bit, and I'm going to up the target strength a bit there. And just a little bit more. And it starts to look a lot better, in that sense. You've got this... No longer have you got this plain old dirt texture. And grass texture, you've actually got an in-between. It can be used very, very wisely. But yeah, up to you how you use it, up to you to add all the detail into your world. Okay, and I could keep going with that, but I'm terrible at that kind of stuff, and I'm going to show you the next bit. Okay, the next interesting thing is we can add some trees. Okay, so let's add some trees into our world. Firstly, up here on the component again, the terrain component, we click on the trees button. We have to actually do the same thing we did with the textures. We have to add in a tree. So if you just go into edit trees, add... Okay, there's no tree there, so we need to go to the dot and double click on the palm. Radio, and we're good to go. So what we can do before we actually add these palms in, I'm going to go around this side to add the palms for some reason, I just feel like it. You can actually get it to variate in the height and variate in their width, and use these settings over here. Okay, so let's say the tree width is going to be 51, and the variation I want it to be about 20%, height a little bit less, variation a bit more, and let's turn down the density, I'm not a fan of how dense that is, and I'll show you what I mean in a sec, up the brush size, and we can add some trees in. But don't go too nuts with this, because for one, they look pretty terrible, because they're all sort of neatly aligned within each other. Okay. There's a couple of things we can do with that. first one we're going to do is we're going to erase the ones that are just on top of the hill. Okay? So if you hold down control, get a smaller brush size first, and you do the same thing. It looks a bit better. And you can randomly remove some in the middle, just so they don't look so mechanical. And there you go. We've got our trees, and you could do this to the whole map. No reason why you can't. Or if you really wanted, you could go in a thicker density of the trees. But as I said, they look very mechanical after a little while. Alright. So from the trees, we can now add some grass. Okay? So, unlike the trees, the grass is actually 2D. It's not 3D. So what we need to do, up on the terrain component once last time, Go to Paint Details. We need to edit and add a grass texture. Okay. And that texture I told you not to use before, you can use it. 
or we can use this one down here. Okay, and I'm going to choose this one up here. Yeah. And we're going to add them in. And just like the trees, you've got these three options down here. It's up to you which camera you want to use. I'm going to zoom in to show you the effect. And we can just add some grass in. Now notice if I click from a distance, I can't see it, but if I zoom in, it all starts appearing. So yeah, there you go. So that's how you create terrain. Texture it, tree it, grass it, and everything else. Alright, in the next tutorial we're actually going to start getting into some gameplay things. We're going to be looking at how to add scripts and more. Alright, good luck everyone.